Hi, Norman with iSave Tractors. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add liquid ballast to your lawn and garden tractor tires. Here we go. Now, some of you might be wondering why you would want to put a liquid inside your tires. The reason for this is this is the best location to put weight on your lawn and garden tractor to improve traction. When you put weight directly into the wheels, it doesn't add any additional strain to the axle frame or other tractor components, and yet it can put a lot of weight into the ground so you can turn that transmission torque into ground torque and move your machine more efficiently. In the case of heavy duty garden tractors like what I specialize in, it greatly increases the ability to do its job. And if you are using this on a lighter machine, it still can make it so your wheels spin less when you are doing snow removal, mowing the lawn, going uphill, etc. And it will make your machine more efficient. Now first let's talk about the liquid that you would typically put in a tire to add weight. Here I am using six gallons of RV antifreeze. I'm using this RV antifreeze because one, I live in Maine where we get very cold temperatures in the fall, winter, and spring. And I, you don't want it to freeze in the tire. So I use this. It's also less toxic than windshield wiper fluid or regular antifreeze which you could also use. Uh, so if this ever spills out of the tire or if it sprung a leak, it's not going to kill everything it touches. So that's important. Uh, you could also use just straight water if you live in warmer climates where you don't get uh, freezing temperatures. There are other things you can use as well, such as beet juice, which doesn't freeze. You can use a commercial product called RimGuard, which I believe is a form of beet juice. Uh, tr a lot of tractor dealers supply that. You And the, the kind of old school liquid was calcium chloride, which is a lot heavier than water or RV antifreeze. However, it takes a few extra steps to mix it, and then it's also hard on the pumps and other components that it comes in contact with because calcium chloride will speed up rusting of metals. So you got to be really careful when you use that. And, you, you know, if you don't want to damage your pump or perhaps the, the rims on your wheels. But you could also use a tube for calcium chloride to mitigate some of those drawbacks. Okay, so here are some of the tools you're going to need to do this. First is a valve stem tire tool. This removes the core from the valve stem that will allow you to put liquid into your tires. You'll also need one of these air water adapter kits. This you hook up to your hose that's hooked to your pump, and then there's a little piece that you screw on to your valve stem, and this is what will allow liquid to uh, get into your tire. There's also a little burping button on there to relieve some of the excess air pressure that escapes from your tire as you fill it with liquid. I'll leave a link to this product in the description below, but this is a must-have for this process. You'll need a water pump of some kind. This is a small transfer pump I purchased from my local Harbor Freight Tools. I believe it's like a half a horsepower pump, and this works great. Short hoses to attach to your water transfer pump. On the outbound side of the pump, I like to use that clear hose just so I can monitor the liquid that's going into the tire. A bucket or other receptacle to hold the liquid while you're pumping it into the tire. And finally, an air compressor to put the final air into your tire when you're done. Now, before we begin, I just want to show you how much weight we're going to be adding to this tire. Each gallon of this RV antifreeze weighs eight and a half pounds. We're going to use six gallons, so that equals 51 pounds of additional weight we're going to put in this tire. So in this case, I'm actually using these tires for a dual rear setup. So I'm going to have four tires. So as you can see, this is going to add 204 pounds to the overall traction gaining weight of this tractor. Okay, now to get started, you have to first remove the valve stem cap, and then using your valve stem tool, remove that core and let all the air out. I installed tire tubes into this tire, so this only can take six gallons. If you did not have a tube, you could probably fit seven or eight gallons of liquid ballast, but I decided to use a tube, so you can use uh, whichever works best for you. 
Now, this piece I'm screwing on came with that water air adapter kit. You just screw that on, and then the other part of the adapter kit will screw to that piece right there. Next, install the hoses onto your pump. This white hose I'm putting on the inlet side, and then I'm going to use that clear hose and put that on the outlet side of this pump. This is the other end of that water air adapter kit right here. And that screws in to this piece right here. For my particular pump, I have to prime it by pouring the liquid into the pump first before turning it on. Your pump may vary, so be sure you understand how to use your pump. Now add your ballast to your bucket. Toss your suction hose in and we're ready to go. About a third of the way through your filling, you're going to want to turn off your pump and allow some of that displaced air in the tire to exit the tire. You can do this simply by turning off your pump like I'm doing here and air pressure will come out. You just got to make sure you hold on to your suction hose so it doesn't go flying around making a big mess. You can also use the little bleeder valve that's on the air water adapter kit, but it's a little slow for my case, so I just did it this way. Once the air's out, you can plug your pump back in, turn it back on, and proceed with filling. Once your liquid ballast is gone, you can turn off the pump, remove the hose, reinstall the valve stem, and finish filling the rest of your tire with compressed air. You want to fill your tire now up with air to the appropriate air pressure for your tire. And there you have it. Now this tire weighs a back-breaking 88.2 pounds. I hope you found this video helpful and enjoyable. The whole purpose of this YouTube channel is to help inspire and teach others to restore and work on vintage garden tractors from the 1950s through the 1980s. If you're not familiar with already, the primary sponsor of this YouTube channel is isavetractors.com. We are the leading developers in aftermarket parts for your vintage cast iron small engines, such as your old Kohler K-Series, KT Twin Series, Magnum Series, your Tecumseh HH, your Briggs and Stratton cast iron engines, your own in CCK engines, and a lot more. We are the most aggressive company out there that's making parts for these old, forgotten engines and machines. I hope you check us out at isavetractors.com to learn more about us. Another unique thing is you can call us Monday through Saturday or email us and ask us any questions. Chances are you're going to get transferred to me, and I will help everybody who talks to me. If you have a problem with your old tractor or engine, give us a call, send me an email. I will give you everything I have to help you through your problem. And it doesn't matter if you're a customer of ours or not. We just want to help people save the tractors. My name is Norman. Thanks for watching.